and we are live welcome guys for this live stream about how to make money on the blockchain we'll talk about digital arts we'll talk about nft and for this live stream i actually won't be the one presenting but i'll give the floor to chloe so chloe is one of my top students on it the blocks she is a big fan of digital art she she has been researching the topic she knows a lot about this so uh, it's going to be really really exciting i'm super curious so without much further ado i give the floor to chloe uh, hey there everyone how are you it's chloe the dev here you can call me chloe you can call me whatever you'd like that gets the point across but uh, i usually go by chloe the dev as much on my social handles uh, so today what I'm going to be talking about is basically if you are any in way interested in NFTs or any way interested in blockchain art, uh, this you might be interested in what I have to talk about. Uh, I'm just going to be mainly talking about how to get started if you've never even heard about blockchain before, how to get a wallet, you know, how to set up your private keys. I know some of you might already know that stuff, it might be just you know second nature, you've been using the blockchain for a while. You might get a little bored, but there is some different ways to make securing your private keys a little bit easier, like using different smart contract wallets to make interacting with the blockchain a little bit simpler for you, a little bit safer as well. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, if you want to then be, you know, create an NFT or create digital artwork, how would you go about doing that? So, you know, what, what platform could you use to do that? You know, so you, that would be Mint-based would be the normal platform for most people. Um, and then maybe how could you sell that? You know, so how could you sell that artwork, whether it's a song, whether it's um, you know, we can do PDFs, you could do any kind of art, video, uh, and you could put that up for sale somewhere. Um, and then I think we can go a little further. I think there are some cool different ways to display that art as well. So if you're a collector, maybe you don't really care much about creating art or putting it on the blockchain, but maybe you want to collect art and you want a cool new way of displaying that for your friends and family. And, uh, Having uh, rare art on the blockchain or just art on the blockchain in general can be a great way to have all your art in one secure location. Um, so, without further ado, uh, so Josh wants to make more with smart contracts. Great to meet you, Josh. We will get there eventually. So, this is our first session that we're doing together, Julian, uh, Pete, the Blocks, and I. Uh, we'll be doing this hopefully every two weeks and we're going to get a lot more technical as we go. But for today, uh, we're going to start with uh, how to get started, which would be getting a Ethereum address. Um, so all that really means is having uh, an address on the blockchain um, that you have control of. So you have to have private keys um, to... Oh, you have some feedback there? I'm not sure if it's for me or... And we can have a bit of feedback. Oh, we can have a bit of feedback. Hmm. I don't have the audio going, going but I'm not sure if it's on the other side. I'll keep going and, uh, I'll keep going and uh, uh, if you guys can let me know if it's better or worse, we'll, we'll, we'll adjust as we go. It's our first time going. Um, okay. Uh, well, I'll try and uh, see if I can fix that as I go. I'll try and get a better mic if I can as well. Um, but so as you go throughout the process, getting a Ethereum address or securing it can be one of the most difficult parts of getting started. Uh, personally, I had a little story this morning happened where I've been trying to secure um, my ledger. I have a Ledger X um, and you get 24 words that you have to secure because if anyone gets you know, access to those, to those words, they can have access to your funds. So the most important part of all of this is at first, it's being secure. So if you have artwork on the chain, or if you're an artist who wants to sell something on, on chain, you want to make sure that what you're selling is secure. You own it, and if someone buys it, they own it. Um, so part of that is making sure your key is secure. So my girlfriend's an artist, and I was thinking a cool way to secure the keys might be to take those words and make them into artwork that only me and her would understand what those words meant. Um, but when you think about that, it really does get difficult because you got to think, well, if you even take a picture of those keys and put them online and someone was able to eventually hack your computer and see, see those keys, you could be compromised in the future, um, even if you forgot that picture was there. So 
there's a lot of different ways to do it, but one of the best ways that I found for most people is smart contract wallets. Uh, smart co contract wallets obscure away a lot of the difficulties of trying to secure your keys, and you don't have to worry about them all, at all, for the most part. So uh, one of the wallets, or the wallet that I recommend to most people to get started with is the Argent wallet if they don't want to have to worry about keys, uh, which basically just, you don't have to worry about having a password to secure as much. Uh, I would use Argent, and if you are okay with using um, uh, the, the Ethereum blockchain and you're more used to it, I like the MetaMask wallet because uh, the tr I can trust at least to a certain uh, assumption that if something went down centrally with MetaMask, a lot of people with a lot more funds than me would be pretty upset. Uh, so that's a pretty good security assumption for me and for beginners, I think, they don't want to worry about security of their assets. Uh, but you will have to worry about securing your private keys in that sense. Uh, so the, the best way for most people is just writing them down uh, in a safe place. You never lose them. Um, some people will laminate them. Uh, as you get more involved with the blockchain, so I put them in security deposit boxes in different banks. Uh, honestly, it's a personal preference, and you've got to decide how you want to secure your keys. Uh, personally, I like finding new and interesting ways to do it because as a researcher, um, that's the way I like to do it. I like to figure out cool, new, interesting ways. So I have my, actually I do have my master's in sports psychology and I have my undergrad in uh, sports management. So I have a 10 year career previous to this in uh, youth sports, soccer coaching. So that's my background is kind of thinking about how people think through things. And so securing, making sure that what I do is secure is kind of my most important thing moving forward. But once you get there, um, it's time to create an NFT. It's time to get started. It's time to, you know, take your music or take your artwork or take whatever you want to immortalize on the blockchain forever uh, and get started. So you do not have to use the Ethereum blockchain. You know, this talk will be focused on Ethereum mostly. Um, there is there are other blockchains. I know. I think Wax uh, is moving to EOS. Um, I know you can make do art on a Bitcoin blockchain, and some platforms allow you to do art on multiple blockchains in one platform. Um, personally, uh, I believe that the, the digital art scene on Ethereum is really uh, big, and there's a lot of moving parts, and there's a lot of ways to get involved for anybody. And so I think to get started, getting involved in Ethereum is a great place to go. Um, so once you get your wallet, you need a little bit of gas. I also think that right now a lot of the Ethereum community gets really frust flustered with the gas prices that are going on, uh, but they're quite high. But you do need gas to get started. Um, but you go to mintbase.io. A lot of feedback on the audio again. Okay, well we'll try. I'll try and uh, keep letting me know if it gets worse and or if it gets better. I'll try and see what's uh, what's making it go in either direction. We'll try and fix that. Um, but yeah, so first thing you do is a mint base. Okay, maybe I'm not 100% sure. Um, so the first thing you do is you go to mint base. Uh, it's a website where you can simply drag and drop files from your computer, uh, click mint, you choose how many of them you want to mint. Uh, the more of them you mint, the more gas you have to use, which is simply the fees you have to. Um, okay. Um, so I guess that can get sorted out. Um, but you choose how many of you want to mint. So on mint base, from what I recall, to mint up to 25 to mint. So if you want to mint, let's say I have artwork. You know, I think that this artwork is really cool and I think I want to sell it. I think people will buy this and I want to create 25 of them. Well, you'll pay more gas for each one of them you create. Also, what tends to happen is the more NFTs, which is non-fungible token, all that really means is that it's a token where you care about its uniqueness. Um, so when you have an ERC20 token, um, it's fungible. So basically, you don't really care if you get one Ethereum from this person or from that person. One Ethereum is one Ethereum. It's a fungible asset. So non-fungible assets just means that you do care if you get one piece of artwork or another piece of artwork. It's not the same. You, have, uh, you do care about getting the specific NFT that you want. So with that comes like a, a value to the uniqueness of artwork. So creating a super rare, there's like a lot of uh, you know, marketing done around that, but a, a one of one piece of artwork on Ethereum or on any digital uh, blockchain can be valuable. So what's something to think about is if you think that your artwork is very valuable, you think you work spend a lot of time on it, 
maybe you want to make it a one of one piece of art so that it has this extra value tied to it for rarity or scarcity. Um, and maybe if you're doing something like for charity or something just to get the word out, you want to make it free. So for example, I helped run a pride event in CryptoVoxels, which is a metaverse built on the blockchain. Uh, we had, I think it was June 27th. Like honestly, life right now is really busy for me. Um, but it was really fun and all these artists from all over the world created uh, LGBTQ plus uh, centric art on the Ethereum blockchain and we, we showcased it and we had um, <clears throat> auctions to raise money, to have galleries put up, to have this art showcase all year long. Great way to bring community together. Uh, so I know this, the topic of this was like, how do you make money on the blockchain? If you guys have any questions about anything about that, please ask them. But part of that comes from learning how to secure your assets First, that learning how to get started and creating your own assets, so you don't have to ask some someone else to do it. So with Mintbase, you can create your own store, uh, and it does cost quite a bit of gas, so a lot of fees to get your transaction included into the Ethereum network. So you know it will cost you. I think it was I did it a few weeks ago. Uh, it was twenty six dollars for my uh, partner, my girlfriend's uh, store. She has a store called Bianca Creates. Um, where she draws digital artwork and you know, we're going to start putting it on the blockchain for that. But also, um, I run a question. So, Crypto Dog Trader, how do you guarantee that if you buy or if you create this artwork, that it's a one-off, one-of-one creation? That's a very good question. And that is because of the, honestly, because of the Ethereum blockchain. So when you go into the smart contract and you go on Mintbase and I said you can choose to create one of these NFTs or 25, there's actually a number in the smart contract that says one or you know, 15, 16, 25 because it's on it, the blockchain cannot change. So it's an immutable smart contract where that, that, that record could never change. So um, yeah, so basically if you go, so you're getting ahead of us there, but I love, I love the direction we're going. So after you create this artwork on Mintbase, you have to sell it somewhere. So the, the, generically, people sell their artwork most of the time on OpenSea. OpenSea is a platform you can go to right now, they have OpenSea.io, um, and that's a platform where you can log in with your MetaMask account. Um, even on MetaMask Mobile, it should work. Um, and you can already be logged into your Ethereum account and simply buy the artwork. And so on the front end of OpenSea, they are grabbing data from the smart contract of those NFT tokens. So if there's only one of those tokens issued, there will be a value in the smart contract that the front end of OpenSea will just read and tell the buyer there will be one of one. So this is a one of one piece of artwork. If you create one of a thousand, so there's some places where you can create an NFT factory that will just keep minting out more NFTs up to a number that the creator sets. So basically, if you say, okay, smart contract, only mint up to a thousand pieces of artwork. Well, then the, 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 smart, the smart contract will just keep ticking up numbers every time it's created because, and this is why I think it's so much fun learning about the back end and learning about smart contracts and learning about how do you verify all this information because you're right. How does someone truly know because you could, you could trust OpenSea to, to, to show you that it's a one-of-one one piece of artwork, but you don't know because OpenSea could get hacked. You know, the front end could get hacked and it could show that it's a one-of-one, one, but it could really be, you know, not the right artwork that you get. So realistically, for me, if I was going to spend a lot of money on a piece of artwork, um, I would... Um, Look at the smart contract. I would, I would look at the smart contract of that NFT and I would make sure that it was a one of one. I would even go so far as to go back. So you can use Etherscan and look up what you're going to buy. So on OpenSea, you can actually see, you go on OpenSea, you can look up artwork you want to buy. It'll show you its, uh, its address on Ethereum. So you can go on to Etherscan now. You can take the address, copy and paste it. You can see all previous owners. You could see everyone it's been transferred to it for how much money. There's a lot of data that's available on the Ethereum blockchain, which I think is, for me, as, again, as, a research, as a researcher, sorry, I love the data availability that we have uh, on, Ethereum, on Ethereum. So what you could do as a buyer of artwork is go to the actual uh, initial smart contract, so the mint base 
creator smart contract and see all the artwork that that artist has ever created, right? You can see how much that artwork sold for in the past. And if you're an art collector, you can see, okay, well, this person creates, you know, one piece a month. They typically sell for around 10 ETH. And so if I can get this piece for 7 ETH, you know, I should, I should be a good investment. You know, maybe you can see a trajectory of their art selling and see, because that data is available, you could create, um, you could create, sorry, I'm just reading the comments and making sure everything's good, but you could create charts and graphs and make sure that the art you're buying is probably going to be valuable more in the future. So, you know, I do have a gallery or the Marla J Foundation, my, my, I say it's an, it's an altruistic organization. Um, where the goal of this organization is just to spread love and positivity throughout the world. Um, my partner and I moved to Antigua last year to kind of fulfill that vision in a more uh, physical way. Uh, we, you know, help some dogs and stuff like that. But one of the ways we want to help now is to have a gallery uh, to showcase people's art. Um, I think that art is something that it can be therapeutic for many people. It is something that helps you grow and change. And it's something that nobody should be limited from. Yes. So they do have commissions built into the platform, if that's what you meant. So on OpenSea, for example, you could have a gallery where you just sell other people's artwork and there's a built-in commission. So if you refer someone else to an asset, you'll get paid. And even if they don't buy, so this is actually really cool. So if, if I, so I have a gallery in crypto fossils, right? If I showcase a bunch of artwork that I like, and I send people to OpenSea, that they click the link from my gallery to OpenSea to buy any artwork, any artwork they buy on that in that session, uh, browsing through the, the exchange, I will get credited. I think it's 2% built in. Um, and you can vary that. So artists can be like, hey, if you sell my artwork, it'll be 10%, right? So now all of a sudden, as a gallery owner, maybe you're more incentivized to, to showcase and sell that artist's artwork. Um, is sold, how can I ensure that this asset can only be accessed by the owner? Yeah, pretty cool stuff, Crypto Talk Trader, pretty cool stuff. So Nicholas, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna try and pronounce your last name. I, eventually, if maybe if you, you sound it out for me later on. But that's a good question. So basically, again, it's all done by Ethereum. So through the Ethereum smart contract, only owner is like what you normally use, a modifier. But basically only the address, we talked about at the beginning of this live session, only the Ethereum address that is in the smart contract to, to own or be able to send, move, trade, burn that NFT, that token, will be able to do so. And that's just... Can you do animations or is it all static pieces? You can do whatever you like. So if you go on to OpenSea, you can make music videos. So so, okay, so it's really cool. So recently, uh, uh, Dow Records, it's basically a, a decentralized autonomous organization on Ethereum trying to make a decentralized record label. And they did the first NFT that was an MP4. So it was, a, it was music and video put together on the blockchain. And you do have to worry about space confinements because in smart contracts, you only have a certain amount of data that you can put on there. But people, this is an area of research of, you know, the asset delivery won't be on chain. The asset delivery is on chain. That's the beautiful part. So you own this asset on chain. So it is yours. The same security that you have for your ETH or for your, you know, your wrapped Bitcoin or for your DAI or for your whatever tokens you have, the same security for those, for, that, for those tokens you have for your own. I think that is the reason why I think digital art on has such a huge future and it's so huge right now. It's like, I think year over year growth is over 250% for NFT uh, transaction sales. Uh, and that was in like March of this year. So, I mean, the transaction history is an open sea. If you look at some of the uh, the transaction volume on OpenSea, it, it'll blow your mind a little bit how much money is being bought and sold. So, remember, you don't think land sales. So, you can buy land in a virtual world. That's an NFT. That's a non fungible, unique token. So, the gallery that I own in Crypto Voxels <clears throat> is an NFT. I bought that for two ETH from somebody. Um, so, there's other ways to use NFTs 
instead of just art as you think of as a picture on a wall. It could be any art. So it could be a digital building. You can make clothing. So in crypto voxels, simple as make clothes. Uh, you can use you can go into the decentraland as a different type of uh, formatting for um, the vectors, I guess, of the clothing or the the, the graphical integrations you use to design the clothing will be different. Instead of using uh, voxels, you just use a smooth interface. Regardless, if you're a graphic designer, you can create clothing or so I was talking to actually Julian uh, about maybe doing some um, live streams from my gallery inside of crypto voxels because that way you know, we can have an extra way to show what we're doing. But if we did that, it'd be cool if my avatar had an Eat the Blocks like, logo on it. You know, to show, you know, mark it, show what we're doing. But I cannot do that. I mean, I am not an artist. I'm a visual artist. That is not my specialty. So on Discord, on the CryptoVoxels Discord, there's a, there's a for hire uh, section where you can hire an artist to create uh, a shirt for you or a design that you can mint and you can sell those designs on OpenSea, you can trade them and sell them using your wallet on Ethereum and yeah, so you can do in-game assets, yeah, so full on the blockchain where like there's so many games on Ethereum that you people do this already. I mean, one of the coolest games is uh, Axie Infinity. I love this game because for $10 in ETH, I got three cards like these little cute little, little balls that, you know, they fight and they breed. Uh, it's kind of like crypto if you've heard of it. But you get, like, these potions that are ERC-20 tokens, small life potions you can trade and sell as you play the game. Uh, you can use a, a pool on Uniswap that you can start getting, start playing around with DeFi and start playing around with the Uniswap pools for free, arguably. And as you play this game, you can start breeding these axes and getting free NFTs where you can start learning how to sell NFTs, learning how to breed NFTs, learning how to get started with, with $10. So I actually gave my axes to my little brother uh, I, for his birthday because I wanted him to get learning Ethereum, learning how to use NFT, learning about all this stuff. And he's got, so he ended up buying a rare, so my, my other older brother bought him a rare Axie so, so they can, if we're, if we're gonna breed, we might have to breed for better uh, quality cards. So now all of a sudden he's using the, the unique traits and you, you think, okay, how do you know these traits are unique? Well, they're unique because they're on the Ethereum blockchain in a smart contract where you know for a fact, you can verify it on chain that this NFT has these attributes and that NFT gains and loses value based on those attributes. And so when people play PVP and they're fighting each other, you could verify who won those matches. You can verify which cards were used. People will, people do verify which traits were with those cards. And on the exchange, cards with like winning traits will be valued higher. So there's some cards that are worth 7, 13 ETH. Um, because they have really good traits. Um, so the gallery, sorry. So I'm going to type some of these out for everybody who's looking for them. Uh, Mintbase is where you would go to create. I think it's mintbase.io. Uh, that's where you would go to create an NFT. You can, you can go there. You can create uh, JPEGs. You can create PNG files. You can do audio files, MP3s, MP4s, video files whatever you'd like okay so that's to get started after that OpenSea is the exchange so OpenSea is where you would go to buy and sell these crypto assets so if you are an artist looking to maybe see what your art may be valued at so yeah no, no worries um, if you want to maybe see hey I'm an artist I can create this level of content how much could that content be worth Go to OpenSea, search for what you might be able to create. There you go. Thank you, Julian. Very helpful uh, for the link. Um, so by, by being able to do that, you can kind of see what other people are doing. Is this a one of one? So one of the things I'm doing, my, my, my little cousin is a, a artist. She's a singer. So what I'm doing through the Marble J Foundation is I'm going to be minting her each one of her new EPs as a one of one release as a way to raise money for her and to raise money for her as an artist. So what I'm going to do is do MP4, and I'm going to have my girlfriend, she's, a, she's an illustrator, so she's going to illustrate the album artwork as the visual uh, content, and then as the audio part of the content, 
uh, we're always going to have a song, and we're going to put it up on the store uh, for one ETH. And what we're going to do is, if it sells, whenever that sells, uh, she'll get 90% of the sale price, so 0.9 ETH, and the Marvel J Foundation will get 0.1 ETH, just to help uh, other people be able to create free art. So, on that topic, uh, as part of the Marvel J Foundation, one of the things, one of our, uh, my mandates, or our mandates, is anybody who wants to create art should be able to do so. And I think that one of the barriers to entry uh, in for creating any type of digital art is are these technological barriers people have. Um, so most people do have a phone, most people do have a way to take a picture of something and get it digital, but not everyone has some ETH or not everyone has some gas fees to mint something. So you can get a wallet right away using Argent on the Google Play Store or the Apple Store. You will not have any private keys, right? You'll be able to just make a wallet right away. Um, you'll be able to use Wallet Connect. It's a way where you can scan a QR code on MintBiz, okay? And log in that way. So that is a way where you're able to not worry about private keys, log in using a smart contract wallet to MintBase, right? And then you could create your own NFTs, go about whatever you want to do. Now, I was talking to the uh, founder of Wallet Connect, and they're working on the mobile implementation for Argent to get Argent connecting with OpenSea mobily. So they don't have that yet. So if you use Argent as your wallet, uh, there's a lot of great access to decentralized finance that you don't have to worry about smart uh, about your private keys. Uh, I use Argent. You get a free uh, ENS name, which is basically an easy, human readable name. So my name on Argent is ChloeTheDev.Argent.xyz. So I know that that could be a barrier for some people. Is like, why am I using a hex address, which is like a zero x a y z whatever craziness? We don't have to use that anymore. So if you don't want to do that, you can use Argent, get an easy readable name, uh, scan a QR code, log into Mintbase and then mint all the NFTs you want and send them to your friends. Um, when you want to actually go on OpenSea, sadly for now, uh, you have to use a, um, a desktop application. Uh, so MetaMask does work for that. MetaMask does have a mobile and desktop application that are very easy to use. You can scan a QR code on your desktop application and go mobile, so that works as well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of kind of how you get started in a secure wallet, uh, go through the gist of it. And so if anybody would like to mint their first NFT and they're like, you know what, this sounds pretty interesting. Uh, I might want to mint an NFT. Um, maybe you want to try getting a MetaMask account. Maybe you want to try getting a Argent account. If you have any trouble with that, reach out to me or Julian. I'm sure we'd both be glad to help you with how to secure your wallet or how to secure your keys. After you go through that, if you want to try minting yourself, you'll need about $30 to $40 in gas fees to make your own store on Mintbase. That can be a, an inhibiting factor for some people. So if you want to mint your own artwork, if you email your artwork to marmajorg uh, at gmail.com, which is the email address for the Marmor J Foundation, I'll type it out uh, at gmail.com. If you email your artwork to that email address, I will do my utmost best to mint it. And you obviously must also send your Ethereum address so I can send it back to you. Um, minting, I already have a store on Mintbase for the Mama J Foundation, so it only cost me a couple dollars in, in gas to mint it, and then I can send it back to you, um, and then you'll have your first NFT. And I think that's some of the biggest barrier for some people. A course to make a private gallery. So I guess it depends. I can go quickly over that. Making a gallery depends how you want to showcase your gallery. So if you wanted to make your own website, that's something where definitely Julie would have more expertise there in how to make a front end to read data off of a smart contract where your NFTs would be to display that on your website. So that would be something you could do straight out of the box on your own. You know totally secure or whatever security guarantees you wanted and modularize it for yourself. That's one option that you could definitely go through. And I am definitely not a front end person. I am, I focus on research and like F2 scalability, validator privacy stuff. Um, I just really love the, uh, everything about Ethereum. So I, I love the NFT side of things as well. 
Um, if you wanted something that was uh, less, you know, involved, there's other ways to, you know, display your artwork for sale. So, for example, if you create a store on OpenSea, like all your links, you could have a link to all the artwork you have for sale, and then just put that link, like put those links somewhere. So even if you just knew how to build websites in a in a, in a like a small way, you could just take pictures of the of the artwork, put it up, take links to OpenSea, you know, and when everyone else wants to buy something, they just click your link. Go to OpenSea, so you know that more Web3 application in your website, you just create a basic Web2 web website with no Web3 application, but people want to buy can go uh, to OpenSea and purchase. Also, really cool, uh, Midbase is adding Stripe implementation, so people will be able to buy from your Midbase store. Very, it's already possible, but it's kind of complicated. Um, yeah, it's kind of complicated to know like, how it works, but basically, Stripe has an NFT that you can buy, okay? And if you buy this NFT, that is KYC, which is know your customer. And they use that KYC to verify that you are allowed to route payments through Stripe. So basically, sorry, you can now create a store with your Argent smart contract wallet on Mintbase, and you can sell your artwork straight through Mintbase. So you don't necessarily have to make your own smart contract. Mintbase will generate a smart contract for you on the Ethereum blockchain, like a factory, and that factory of yours will be only will be owned by your Ethereum address. It's kind of it's kind of confusing. If you want to learn more about this stuff, go to watch like more of Julian's videos, and he explains all of this stuff. But basically, all that happens is if you go on Mintbase, you you get a smart contract owned by your address. So you've secured your address, and then only owner of this factory, this NFT factory, can do anything, can burn, make more ones, or anything like that. So you can only do stuff with this. But you can also sell from the same smart contract. So other users can see what's for sale on the smart contract, and now it works as a selling platform as well. OpenSea is simply a better UI. Um, so if you want to sell, a serious way, you probably want to go to OpenSea. But as Julie, as like someone was asking, uh, and Julie was saying, if you made your own Web3 platform, you wouldn't have to worry about OpenSea at all. So OpenSea went, their funding went down, or OpenSea was having issues, or whatever. Because OpenSea has centralization risk as well. So OpenSea is great, it's a wonderful platform. But OpenSea friend could get hacked. And so your users could think they're buying something they're not buying. And for no fault of your own, you could have an issue with a bad user experience trying to purchase your artwork. So again, as a security researcher, I always think about, you can choose whatever security assurances that you want, but as long as you're aware of all the security assurances, go for whatever you want. So if you want to learn how to make your own website and take data off the blockchain yourself, run your own Ethereum nodes to make sure that the data is verified, um, you know, you can make, run your own server to host your front end. You can use the IPFS for all your artwork to make sure that all your artwork is being hosted in a decentralized way. Because when you create this NFT, um, the data, this data availability becomes the issue. So if you're, so some of the questions have been, okay, how do someone buys this artwork? How do you make sure, or the buyer of it? So you pay a thousand dollars for a piece of art, piece of, you know, color on a wall. You know, my brother was asking that. I don't get it. Like, I don't get why someone would pay three ETH, five ETH for a bunch of pixels on a wall. You can just copy off someone else. Like, what is the value to that? And again, I think it always comes back to the same point. The value comes from the value of whatever blockchain it's on. So in this case, the value comes from the value of Ethereum. Because you know, well, if you could assume Ethereum is immutable, so records can't be changed, then you could assume that when you look back at when your artwork was created, that record is correct. So when you go to a pawn shop in 40 years and you try and verify that this artwork was created by this person at this point in time, um, the pawn shop owner doesn't have to trust your certificate was real. They can look on the blockchain and see, oh wow, this artwork really was created by this person on this day at this point in time. And you could show who bought it, how much money it was worth, what and so, in my opinion, it makes art more valuable because 
you know, in, currently with non-blockchain based art, if I have these art, there's forgeries, there's, you know, all types of issues with how do you authenticate that this piece of artwork is real? And it's an issue in not only in all work, but in, in all forms of authentication and security authentication. So in artwork, as a, as a digital art, art artist, so you've never heard of blockchain before, you just create digital artwork. Your artwork can already be replicated. Right? Your artwork can already be ripped off the internet or stolen or whatever else. So it's almost like, why wouldn't you have an extra security assurance that, okay, someone's gonna steal my artwork anyways, but this way, if I make it a one-of-one one rare piece of art, someone can be proud they own this artwork. Someone can be proud that they're supporting me showcase it somewhere. So for me, I showcase my artwork in crypto voxels. So crypto voxels is a metaverse, uh, which is a, a VR, artificial reality world, where you get a... Um, yeah, so in my gallery, actually, I'm actually going to link a link to my gallery because I feel like trying to explain all of this sometimes is a bit confusing when you use um, a visual to try and explain. So I'm going to put a, vis a vision um, and try and my computer is not having a fun time with this. But I want to put a link in the chat and you'll be able to see how that works. So you can put up poetry because you can put up audio and you can put up visual. So and you can put up both together as an MP4. So if you want to put up just the picture of a poem, you can go for it. If you want to put up the audio. So for example, in crypto voxels, um, you can set something so that when someone walks into your gallery, um, when someone walks into your gallery, music starts playing. So one of the things you could do is, for example, have uh, some poetry playing as someone walks into your gallery, welcoming them to your store. Hey, on the left, you'll see, you know, my artwork from this year. On the left, on the right, you'll see, and that could be an NFT. And you can say, you know, if you like this gallery, the NFT recording of this is for sale. You know, on OpenSea at this link. Feel free to pay anything you want for this, and it would really go along with supporting me as an artist. <clears throat> so. You could, not only do you have to have a set price for your NFTs, you could have an NFT that has, and, and it's always able to be generated for any price. So if you know how to build smart contracts, you can have a lot of fun. You can create your own NFT factory where you know you can allow anyone to just simple. Was for my charity having a free NFT generator smart contract where anybody could there would be a pool of ETH, ETH, a pool of gas where anybody could one time, any smart contract can call and get one NFT minted and sent to their address, right? And if they paid anything above zero, that would go back into the pool for the next person that wanted to mint an NFT. So if you had gas or you had extra funds or you had you know, 10 bucks or 15 bucks, you could donate and be like, you know what? I have a little bit of extra money. I'll mint an NFT with, you, with, with, you know, with the Marjorie Foundation and allow um, that to work that way. And what we would do is we would actually put that piece of artwork for sale in the Marla J Gallery as well and try and sell it for that artist. The artist, if they got paid, would get you know 90% of the profits. The foundation would get 10% of the profits. And again, that profit would go back into the pot to allow more people to mint free artwork. And so pretty much it would be a cool smart contract to create, um, again, just to allow for more art creation, just more people creating art in the world. I think um, if there's any way, and I think there's really cool ways to do this, like eventually using DeFi or like staking, like, you know, what if I, you know, the, the foundation raised enough money to have like 32 ETH, and so you built a smart contract built off the staking rewards that basically whenever it had enough money to, to, to stake, you'd send the money to a smart contract where then, you know, you can mint uh, NFTs based on your staking rewards, and then you know you'd always have money coming in to help people make you know arguably free artwork. Uh, so there's lots of really cool. I know like I would go on for days about this stuff. So uh, yeah, my chat closed because like having all this stuff open was was a lot, uh, and so I'm still trying to get that link in the chat. Don't worry. Here is the link. So this is my gallery. 
uh, in the Bronx of crypto voxels. It is decorated for pride, so it is very uh, flamboyant and colorful, but enjoy. There is some artwork from a genderqueer artist that uh, I know, a friend of mine. There is some artwork from other people in the, 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 you know, the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, there's some information about myself there as well, so you can take a look around. You can fly around crypto voxels and look if you'd like. Um, I had some questions. So what if the buyer prints the artwork and uses it in a commercial manner? Very good question. So obviously the blockchain is decentralized, but there are times when inside of centralized areas, um, art can get replicated. So in crypto voxels, for example, if you go on OpenSea and type in crypto voxels, you'll see all the artwork that is being bought and sold in crypto voxels. But if you're an artist who wants to mint something in crypto voxels, you, so a voxel specific art, not generic NFTs. So just to be clear, I know that can be confusing for some people. Basically, uh, a voxel specific NFT would be something that would be showing up in crypto voxels only. A general Ethereum NFT would be any artwork that could show up in any location on the Ethereum blockchain. So in crypto voxels though, there's a team that, that validates all the minting. So you have to like verify, I am the owner of this artwork before I mint it, uh, please mint five of these for me. And they'll mint them for you for free. So if you want to create some artwork for, in crypto voxels and try selling it, you could actually make clothing in crypto voxels put it on the website, like the CryptoVoxels website, they will mint it for you and send it to your address. So another f way to get free uh, NFTs is to create uh, CryptoVoxel art. So you could actually, so, oh, so a way to get started, okay, in this way. You can go to CryptoVoxels.com. You can go to, uh, they have a, a tab that shows all the NFTs that exist in the world, the .vox files, V-O-X. Um, oh. Uh, crypto voxels. Maybe YouTube doesn't want it to show up. Uh, it's on my Twitter as well. <laughs> it should be. Uh, I'll I'll get the link posted somewhere. So you, you can, but if you go to crypto, um, you'll be able to go visit anyone's parcel, which is more important than visiting my parcel. Uh, you'll be able to see how the world works. Uh, and basically, they will make sure that you are the owner of the art. So there are disputes at times, but again. The Ethereum blockchain settles all disputes because if you say I created this piece of artwork and someone says no, I did, I actually did, well, you can say no. Look, I minted this, you know, June fifteenth, and you minted this June thirtieth. I own this, and then Crypto Voxels will burn the asset, so you know they have some access over world, or they'll make it not show up in worlds. Uh, so they have, they have control over their own world. So you do have some control over your assets being shown up in certain locations. So, you know, if someone copies your NFT, they can mint it, of course. No one can stop them from minting it as an NFT and selling it wherever they want. But OpenSea could stop them from, from having it as an auction on their front end. Uh, they probably have control over their back end, too, to be completely honest. It's probably a proxy smart contract where they can stop listings. Which is why, again, I say if you can make your own smart contract, you could create art that, for example, if you're an artist who does you know, lewd art or art that would be considered you know, not safe for work, you know, I'm not sure exactly. There might be other platforms you have to use because OpenSea might not take on that art. Uh, on a, cause it, you know, these platforms are centralized. But if you knew how to create your own uh, platform, you would be able to create your own exchange uh, where you could sell and trade your artwork without having to worry about you know a website not allowing you to do it or someone coming down on you for whatever you wanted to display. So it could be music that people are wanting you to, to put in their stores, or it could be whatever you want. So for me, having a gallery was to, sh to just to be like I have a, a place that no matter what happens. So again, as a security researcher. Um, I like mitigating risk whenever possible. So even with COVID, for example, if I bought a gallery on the beach somewhere in, in, you know, in the Caribbean and I loved it, if a pandemic hits, can people still have access to my artwork? Can they still purchase it? So maybe they can still do a virtual tour, but can they purchase it still? Maybe they can still purchase through Visa or credit card, but how long does it take to get there? You know, maybe they can get FedEx, or but what if they're in a different country? Other side of the world, how do I get the them quickly? There's fees, so it's it's possible to still do those things. It's just I feel like 
there's issues there. Whereas if I have a gallery in crypto voxels, I can have artwork in any way. Like I can have visual artwork, I can have YouTube videos attached to that artwork, or when someone clicks the link on my gallery wall, um, they get brought to a YouTube video that has more information. It can have a walkthrough to the physical piece that I'll send you at the end of it. I can use the Open Law. Open Law is a smart contract, I guess, team or platform that basically creates legal binding smart contracts on Ethereum. So you could use that to ensure that when someone buys your NFT, you are legally obligated to send them the physical representation of that, for example. So all in one Ethereum transaction, you could have a gallery in the metaverse, uh, have someone click on a link, get all the information about what it is, see a virtual walkthrough, get information about your website, where things are sold, what's going on, and then purchase it with Visa, Stripe, uh, ETH, wrapped Bitcoin, whatever token on Ethereum. And I think that's what it's about, having options. Um, so you have artwork, for example, that's not only sold digitally. So one of the things I tell a lot of people who are blockchain artists is I say, if you already sell art or you're thinking about selling art, if you just create artwork, a one-of-one -one unique piece, you can just have that for sale for whatever amount of money. You can say, okay, I'm selling this one-of-one -one for one ETH. If you buy this, you are you know, promoting me as an artist, supporting me and my goals, whatever dreams you have, and that will be one-of-one. -one. But you could still sell the copy as a print, right? You could still sell these prints and still push this artwork because you could even say, every time someone purchases this print, it'll sell for $10. 10% of that sale price will be converted into dye or whatever, a Y dye, so interest bearing dye and put into the artwork, right? So let's say you had a piece of artwork and you were like, okay, you know what? Every time I sold this piece of artwork, $1 of DAI would be converted and put into the smart contract for the token. And only the owner can withdraw that DAI, right? So over time, as your artwork sold, non blockchain art, normal art, say you sold a thousand pieces of art over three or four years, that means there's gonna be a hundred, sorry, a thousand DAI, or a hundred DAI, sorry, I think a hundred pieces, a thousand pieces, whatever you sold, a thousand dollars would be in this uh, smart contract. Interest bearing die, I think why that right now is like 4% a year, which is not that crazy. I know right now everyone's doing this yield farming thing and they're all like having a lot of fun doing like 200%. I know Julian did a great video about yield farming the other day and uh, for me personally, it's a bit out of my comfort range, but I know if you have like the, the bot, I do a flash level course with Julian right now and trying to figure out ways to, learning ways to have automate a lot of these processes because this stuff can get tricky. But you can find value to your NFTs so that when someone buys them, it's not just buying artwork. So people ask me, what's the difference between art that I can rip off the internet or art that I can buy an NFT? The point is, an, an NFT is a smart contract attached to it. So you can do whatever you want with that smart contract. You could add gold to it every month. And you know you can say that whatever gets added to it cannot be withdrawn. So someone can just say, okay, you know, there's an extra $100 attached to this artwork. I'm going to buy it and then, you know, if they're, if they're buying it for $50, it wouldn't hurt you because you're getting 50 and they're getting 100 and your artwork's being sold and you're, it's a cool new way of promoting yourself. So there's a lot of cool ways on Ethereum to make unique, cool NFTs um, if that's what you would like to do. And that does require some learning and some extra knowledge and some modularization. Um, and if you just want to sit there and draw all day and use MintBase to just mint and put on OpenSea, that's also an option. And I think it's it's wonderful how on Ethereum now, after all these years, I've been I've been in the community for since 2016 and it's come a long way. But I think now there's a way for artists and people who care about art or want to create art to securely and easily, honestly, um, get started. So um, again, if anyone has any questions still, I'm gonna wrap up soon. Um, ask away. Um, my link is there for my email. Um, you can go to mamaj.org, and that's my email. Uh, sorry, that's our website for the Mama J Foundation. Uh, you can find an email there. You can send us an NFT, send us your Ethereum address, and we'll mint one free NFT for you. Um, can't promise it, 
gas prices have been crazy. We'll do our best. Uh, we have a Gitcoin grant where we try and raise money for these types of things. Um, so, you know, we'll do our best to mint as for many people as possible. Um, but yeah, it's very nice to meet everyone who participated. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, you know, bearing with us through audio issues or whatever issues we may have had. Uh, this is our first one. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being able to kind of talk about what I'm interested in and, and kind of hopefully help or teach in any way. Uh, we're hopefully doing this every two weeks. We're definitely doing it in two weeks. Um, so in, in two weeks from today, we'll be doing this again at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, and we'll be talking about um, using uh, web, different ways to use Web3, I'm pretty sure. So different ways to use Web3 uh, to connect and make uh, accessibility of the blockchain easier. So today, we talked a little bit about Ethereum, use MintBase, use OpenSea. So the way in which you connect using a connect, which basically allows you to do two, instead of typing your private key all the time, you can just scan a QR code and get access and log into these dApps. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Josh, for saying that. I really appreciate the comments. They mean a lot. Um, they really help me to know, you know, to gauge how this is going, engage the audience. So uh, I'm just here to help. So if you guys have things that you want to learn, so I know someone said they want to learn how to make a website where they can sell their artwork. Definitely tell us these things. Tell Julian these things. This is how we're going to create. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for the comment. Um, I'm going to try my best to provide information that is useful. Um, and, you know, I'm always in, like, the, the Eat the Blocks Discord channel, chatting up with people. Um, but, yeah, thank you much, so much, everyone. Feel free to reach out to me on, usually I'm on Twitter or the Eat the Blocks Discord. Um, and it was very fun and enjoyable to have this discussion with everyone. Um, and I look forward to talking to you guys more and seeing you all in two weeks. So I'll let Julian take it from there. And, uh, yeah, thank you, everyone, for this time. Awesome. Bye, everybody.